On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we're back with my 1999 Jag XJ8 that was sitting for 16 years and I bought for just a thousand dollars. And today, we're gonna try to make it run. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jericho and today, like I said, I am here with the cheap Jag that came from a car dealership that literally just left it sitting since 2006. And yesterday we jumped in here, diagnosed this thing and found out the fuel pump was bad. Now I just got back from O'Reilly's where we picked up all of the parts to fix it, hopefully, hopefully, for just $100. So maybe at the end of this, I might only be in the car $1,100. Now it's out of coolant, so obviously we'll have to refill that. That's probably $20, $30 in coolant, something like that. But I'm gonna show you guys all the parts we picked up to put this thing together. And before you think this is expensive, the real parts to fix this are either $300, $500, or $700 based on where you buy and which version of the parts you buy. We got this thing hopefully fixed for just a $54 fuel pump from O'Reilly's. It's a, a Master Pro kind of universal kit, and I'm hoping that just swapping this into the bracket solves the whole thing. And here is our bag of parts. The fuel pump we're gonna swap it over to is right here. It's the MPE 16006. This is like a universal uh, pump that just drops into the bracket and has some adapters so you can build something. We have a new pickup slash strainer because that does have to be replaced as well. Uh, it's been sitting in nasty old ethanol for years, probably bad. Oh, also a new fuel filter because why not? Uh, 33481 is the fuel filter. Right behind the wheel well is where you're going to find that filter. And it has flare fittings on both ends that you will need to unscrew. It's not a quick disconnect. So I expect that's not going to be very fun. And also I had to buy another quick disconnect kit because mine is locked away at the shop. And luckily these don't cost too much. The offset ones I think are going to make this easier to use. And uh, you have to disconnect quick disconnects that are literally impossible on this car. First things first, I'm gonna open these up, crawl underneath the car and show you guys what I'm working with. And what I'm working with is uh, a nightmare. I already had to get the parking brake undone just to get my hand in there at all. And now I can touch the lines. Hopefully after this, I can get two hands in there and get the lines apart. Here's the new fuel filter. I'm gonna grab some wrenches so uh, we've got an idea of what I'm working with before I crawl underneath the car. I know the camera doesn't wanna focus on it, but the fuel lines run through the bottom of the floor above the rear diff. So if you're on a lift, this might be a reasonable job, but if you're not on a lift, it's a very unreasonable job. It's an actual nightmare. Now the fuel filter is right there, right up above the spring. If you can see that, that's actually not a big deal at all, but everything else is an absolute nightmare to get to. I even had to disconnect the e-brake just so I could get my arm through the little gap between the drive shaft and the exhaust here. And of course doing that, the bolt broke. So. We're gonna have to extend the bolt just so we can put it back together. I am now eight, nine, ten. I don't know. I, I spent four or five hours on this fuel tank yesterday, and that's where we stopped before we went to get parts. And now I'm probably a whole, well, basically a whole other day is sunk into it. I did everything I could to get this tank out, and let me tell you what a absolute nightmare it is. So once you get the fuel spout out, you got to release that. You have to remove this retainer spring that holds on the rubber and then clean all that up. Then you can start getting the tank out, pull the straps. Obviously we did all that. And uh, we had this thing about ready to come out and you can see that now I have an access hole. I bought quick disconnect tools. They didn't fit. Obviously I don't have mine. So I went and got another set, a smaller set that's much easier to get into the holes. This thing has foam, little foam holes that are all the way up above the diff and there's no way to get them out basically without having a two post and dropping the entire differential out. So what I ended up doing was what the JAG forums recommended. After I did get the quick disconnects in and I pushed as hard as I could and they would not release. So they're actually still in there. I gotta get the tools back out. But the JAG guys say to make yourself a little hole there and just keep right on working. So that's what we did. This giant six by nine hole is a uh, factory and there's a rubber cover that's gonna go back on for that. And then I bent up some of the metal after we created a huge hole. And now we have access to the tank and the fuel pump sits down there on the bottom of that thing. So there's a mount that uh, screws into the bottom of that. That holds the pump upright. And once you get that giant access hole made, you can get all of the EVAP stuff and the uh, auto vent or whatever they call this thing. Also the tank pressure sensor, all of that. This comes off the top and this connector here, the pump power runs through and then uh, that goes down to the pump. 
that sits in the bottom of the tank. And as you can see, I've got the new pump all rigged up in the old bracket, ready to go in. And actually that Aurelius pump plugged right in. I was definitely expecting to have to splice these wires. I'm super excited that I don't. So we are gonna test this, but it should be ready to go now. New sock on there. The old sock was this rusted looking piece of junk. The old pump was all nasty. Um, I haven't had to use much else out of the O'Reilly's kit here yet, but we have a complete fuel pump set up, ready to go in. I'm wiping out the bottom of the tank to make sure we get all the junk out of there. We've made two passes so far. We're gonna stick one more rag in here, get it clean, and then mount everything back in. You guys aren't gonna believe this, but the new pump is in there, and all I have left to do is hook up the fuel line and put the top back together. We also cleaned it all the way out. You can see we dried it, wiped it all out, vacuumed the tank out, and got every bit of rust that we could out of there to make sure uh, there were just some little chunks on the bottom. I had to make sure it was all good. So that is the inside of the tank. Almost there. Probably 20 more minutes and this tank will be all the way back together, full of gas, and we're gonna start it up. 12 hours in and I'm putting gas back in the Jag. So I got under, I got the quick disconnect tools back out because they didn't do anything for us anyway and everything is mostly wrapped up in here. Uh, filler neck's back, the drain for the gas cap isn't back yet, but basically everything else is. And I've got five gallons of nice fresh premium here that I can't wait to smell because two days of smelling this horrible old gas has been terrible. My whole house smells like it. All my clothes smell like it. Cannot wait to have fresh gas in this thing. And hopefully when I put this in in a couple seconds, this thing starts. These gas cans rock because no safeties. And these gas cans are terrible because leak city. They never stop leaking. The fresh gas does smell amazing, but it's not great when it goes everywhere. So let's get a funnel in here. We've got at least half of that can in here, which I think is enough to cover the sock. So let's purge the line first. You can see I still have the Schrader out. So we're gonna let the pump run. There's some fuel, that is nasty. There we go. Nice fresh fuel starting to come out. That works for me. The Schrader is back in the fuel rail. Here comes the first real test. It keeps starting after two primes. I don't wonder if the pump's staying on. Oh, no, we have a leak. That would explain a lot. It was definitely leaking fuel out of the Schrader valve. It wasn't tightened down quite enough. So now let's try again. Hopefully we can build some pressure and this thing runs. Pump run. Pump run again. Here we go. We're almost there. Now that the fuel pump's in, I think we don't have enough fuel pressure because it starts and then it dies and it seems like the pump won't stay running. So obviously our next step here is to get out our fuel pressure test kit from our Riley's. Freeloader tools for the win. And hopefully we're gonna need an adapter there, aren't we? That is way too big. Uh, I think we need that guy. Then we're gonna test the fuel pressure on this thing. And hopefully we have 60 PSI. If we don't, we are already in trouble. I think the fuel filter might be bad and the fuel filter is completely rusted on. So I'm having no luck getting it off. So uh, testing first, fuel filter second. Let's go. All right, here we go. We got nothing. Last time we had 20 PSI and a massive leak out of this fitting. So we're gonna go ahead and reprime right now. And hopefully we see 60 PSI, that would be amazing. So go ahead and give it a bump. Nothing. That is two PSI on. Okay, bump it. Well, that's not terrible, but we lose all of our pressure after one second. We almost had 40 PSI there, and then it bled all the way back down to five PSI. So, well, we got pressure. Unfortunately, it is not enough pressure and it's not holding. So I don't know if it's a bad regulator or what's going on here. Okay, turn it to on. 10 PSI, bump it. <laughs> 60 PSI when the pump's on, and then we immediately lose it all. 
Okay, go ahead and turn it off and try to crank it. Well, we actually don't have a pressure issue. I thought we had a bad filter, but while it was cranking, we're holding 55 PSI, 60 PSI when it comes off crank. And I mean, honestly, that is all together good. So let's just ditch this fuel here and go ahead and unhook this. We know uh, it's not a pressure issue anymore. We just need to figure out why this thing doesn't want to start. That is excellent news, much better than I expected. Right after the pump went in, I was making great progress. Obviously the thing started, it's clearly not missing on anything. People are just going on in the comments that have just no idea. I've never once started an engine on camera that's been down a cylinder, and I've gotten thousands of comments saying, that engine's down a cylinder. This engine is clearly perfect, uh, and it runs great. But I can't get it to stay running. It starts and it dies, and it starts and it dies, and I don't understand why. So obviously fuel pressure, fuel filter, those were the next steps. The fuel filter is completely rusted into place and that did not solve it. So we did everything we could for today and we continue troubleshooting on the Jag and hopefully we have it knocked out um, the next time we see this car. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjr.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. I don't get it. Let me try one more time. Let's see if it'll start. I've tried so many times, but I did completely charge the battery last night, just in case. Pump runs. Okay. Two seconds, it runs for two seconds. I don't get it. Maybe I need to clear the codes and we'll be uh, problem solved. Maybe we need to hook the math back up and block off all the air leaks, but we're gonna get this thing. There's not much left to do, that's for sure. Troubles! What are you doing? Go, bite it, oh. bite it, bite it. It's a camera, you're afraid <laughs> of camera.